In this video, we're going to discuss one of the practical examples where net would be useful as a configuration solution. Say, for instance, we're behind site A and our company has bought and done a corporate merger with another company, maybe a much smaller company with just one office location. And um, we call that site B. And as it turns out, there's an underlying IP address conflict because the local IP submit, sub submit that we use is 172.16.30/24, and that other company also happens to have the same IP subnet. But let's first actually try to understand why is this a problem. The firewall knows this 172.16.30 as a local directly attached network, and any sort of route lookup would remain local, would never break out to any other uh, via any other interface, and the same applies here. And to validate that, let's go on to our servers, um, server 30, which is 172.16.30.30 in the last octet, and server 60 would be 172.16.30.60 in the last octet. I'm going to do a ping from server 30 to server 60. On server 30, let's validate our IP. Our IP address is 172.16.30.30. On server 60, IP IP address is 172.16.30.60 and trying to ping 172.16.30.60 it's not getting anywhere let's have a look at the 48 and see what's happening this is the site A firewall So we're doing packet capture on the firewall to try and see what's actually happening um, from the perspective of the firewall. We have our ping um, ongoing and we have destination host unreachable. And on the firewall, what we see is just a local segments op request by 172.16.30.30, which we know to be server 30, trying to find 172.16.30.60. It's just doing a local ARP. We don't see the firewall make any attempt to forward this traffic out any other interface. So the route lookup is not happening because this subnet is local directly attached. So that's for site A. The same would hold true for site B. If we look at the routes, we already have a default static route and all the traffic for networks that are not local to us, that we don't explicitly have in our route table, they'll be forwarded out to 10.160.10.1. And that happens to be the interface on e uh, interface E00 of our ISP router. And the same for site B. The site B48 also has a default static route to the 10.180.10.1, their ISP um, interface as well. So there is a route and we can actually reach from 40 gate, uh, let's say from site A to site B. So between the two firewalls, we, we should have reachability. So uh, site A. So the routing is in place um, simply because the ISP um, has directly attached interfaces um, on the left and right hand side so the fire the two firewalls can reach each other because server 30 is not able to reach server 60 because of the fact that there's no route lookup happening what we need to do is create a, a virtual interface a virtual address on site b to use as a destination and translate 20.20.20.60 um, internally to 172.16.30.60 and then we'll test again from server 30 to see if we have reachability. Now let's go to site B and do just that. We go to security policy and objects. Let's cr first create our virtual IP. I'll call it virtual IP 60. And the outside address that we want to present is 20.20.20. .20 .20. Dot 60 because I, I want to keep the last octet consistent and we're mapping this internally to 172.16.30.60
So this will be one to one. I'm just going to leave it exactly like this. Now the next thing is to create a firewall policy allowing the inbound traffic from site A. That I will just call inbound. And the destination here is going to be our virtual IP. I'll allow all services. And disable net because we're using virtual IP. So we have our virtual IP. Now, while we add this, I want to do the same on site A um, so that when we test, we can test from server 30 to server 60, server 60's net uh, virtual IP. And we can do the same in the reverse direction from server 60 to server 30. So on site A, I'll need to create a virtual IP there as well. And this one, I'm going to name uh, virtual IP 30. And the net address that we're presenting is 10.10.10. .10 .10. because we're keeping the last octet consistent. We leave this the way it is. Now, I'm going to create a security policy as well for inbound traffic. Exactly the same as uh, the policy we created on site B. And the destination is going to be our virtual IP 30. Disable that. Let's go to server 30 and again attempt reachability to server, server 60, this time using the virtual IP. Twenty dot twenty dot twenty dot sixty. We don't have reachability, and if we look at our topology, our firewall has reachability to this firewall. And let's have a look at the firewall's raw table. From here, we can see that we don't have any um, raw table entry for the destination twenty dot twenty dot twenty. What we do have is the default route to ten one sixty ten dot one. Now, this is our ISP. Let's have a look at ISP and see, does the ISP know how to get to 20.20.20? The ISP does not have a route entry for 20.20.20 or even 10.10.10.10. So let's create those static routes with our ISP, within our ISP environment first. And this is going to be reachable via 10.160.10.254, which is the when facing interface on site A. 10.160.10.254. 20.20 would be reachable via 10.180. Okay, now that's in place. Let's see from server 30 if we can now reach 20.20.20.60. Oh, and our ping has started to work. We have a response from 20.20.60. And let's go to server 60 and do a ping test to server 30. 10.10.10.30. There we have IP reachability as well. I'm going to leave this running. Um, so under the hood, we want to have a look at the firewalls and see what's exactly happening um, in the firewall in terms of routing. Okay, actually, um, from side B, I'm going to filter this um, by the destination that we're trying to reach, which is 10.10.10.30 to clean up my um, screen, the output here. So looking at this, 
um, the first line of our session table, we can see outgoing traffic from 172.160.30.60 with the destination of 10.10.10.30. That is being translated to the visual IP's address of 20.20.20.60. And when we look at site A, so this is from site A, uh, so site B, um, from the server uh, 60 side of the network, um, going to 10.10.10.30. When we look at the firewall A um, on the in, in, inbound direction, we can see the source address 20.20.20.60 with the destination of 10.10.10.30. That traffic on that side is being forwarded out to 172.160.30.30. So the translation table is complete and we can see the complete flow and how the traffic is being translated from 172.160.30.60 in, in that direction. And in the reverse direction, we can see from site A, um, 172.160.30.30 with the destination of 20.20.20.60. And that traffic is being translated to 10.10.10.30. Now, the second line on site B shows that as a, as a source 10.10.10.30 with the destination of 20.20.20.60, that traffic being forwarded in return to 172.160.30.60. Now, I admit this scenario is very much small scale. And um, corporate environments are much, much larger, but the principles will always remain the same. Having said that, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.